Hello. Uh, this is Professor Umar Rao from RV Engineering College. In this session, we'll be dealing with optimal power flow solutions. You have already seen the problem of economic dispatch, wherein for a particular demand condition in the system, the generation is allocated to various plants such that there are two things we satisfy. The sum of the generations is equal to the demands plus the loss and the overall cost is minimized. Now, uh, in the economic dispatch problem, we have seen two situations. If we don't consider losses, then all the plants must be operated with equal incremental cost. That's the first thing we saw. And if we include losses, the, what we call as the coordination equations, uh, they result in operating the plants such that the product of the incremental fuel costs and the penalty factors are equal. Okay, so now we will move on to optimal load flow solution and uh, see what it is. Now, just as the problem of economic dispatch deals with allocating the generation to different plants to minimize overall operating costs, the problem of optimal load flow deals with real and reactive power flow control so as to minimize the instantaneous operating costs. So in this session, we'll be doing a little bit of mathematical jugglery and uh, let me take you through it so that you understand what we are doing. You all know the typical problem of load flow, right? So what do we do in a load flow? In a load flow, you're given the demand and you're given the generation and uh, you have the network equations and using that, you meet the uh, uh, constraints. That is your voltage limit constraints, if anything, if anything has been given and you solve for all the voltage magnitudes and voltage angles. This is the problem of load flow. And we know the popular methods, Gauss CDL or newton raphson fast decoupled and so on. Okay, so now there in the typical load flow problem, you are given the generations in our data. So our data includes the power generated at all the buses. Okay, so you have PV buses, wherein you specify the voltage generated and you specify the magnitude of the voltage at a particular bus. And then you have PQ buses, wherein you specify both P and Q, right? So in optimal load flow, what we are going to do is, given the demand, right? And we are going to make an estimate of the generations, which would lead to minimum operating costs okay this we don't consider in normal load flow so you can think of the normal load flow solution as a static solution and you can view the optimal load flow as a dynamic solution okay because the demand may suddenly change in the system and then so dynamically you go on changing the generation to optimize the costs so let me take you through the various steps involved in this algorithm so there is the first method in step one. So the real loads at various buses are specified. That is PDI is specified. And we assume initial values for generation. That is P naught GI at all the buses except the slack bus. At the generator buses. Right? So please let me draw your attention. If you look at the index for D, the demand or the load, it is from I is equal to one to N. You can have the load at all the buses, including the slack bus. If there is no load, it will simply be PDI will be equal to zero for that particular bus. Whereas the generation is assumed, look at the index, it is from I is equal to two to M, right? First slack bus, I don't take the generation. I have to calculate it. And I have only M generated buses. 
So out of n total buses, one will be slack buses, slack bus, m PV buses, the remaining are all PQ buses. Okay. So now that we know PG and PD at all the buses, we calculate the injected powers. And you know what the injected power is defined as uh, the generation minus the demand. That is the net injection into the bus. Okay. So the generation is injected. The demand is drawn. So the net injection is the difference of the two. So I calculate PI for all the buses, excluding the slack bus. So this is the first step. And of course, along with this, you do have the data of your network. That means the line impedances, the half line charging, any reactors, capacitors connected. So the line data is there and you would have already formed the Y bus using the line data given to you. And so in the second step, what you do is with your assumed values of PGs, you run the load flow. You can run a newton raphson or you can run an FDLF load flow method to calculate the voltage angles at all the buses and the voltage magnitude at the PQ buses. Because at the PV buses, the magnitude is already specified, right? And the slack bus voltage is fixed and the slack bus voltage magnitude is constant and the angle is taken always as the reference and taken to be zero in our solutions, right? So this is the second step. So in the first step, you're assuming generations and with those generations, you're running a load flow in the second step. Now, in the third step, I calculate the slack bus power, right? So this is the equation for power injected at any bus. You're familiar with it. It's a typical load flow, what you have used in your load flow and to derive all your load flow equations, so PI is equal to sigma J equal to one to N VI VJ GI J cos delta I minus delta J plus PI J sine delta I minus delta J. So here GI J and VI J are taken from the Y bus. So from the bus admittance matrix, the real part is GI J and the imaginary part is VI J. Okay, and these are all the magnitudes of the voltages and delta I and delta J are the magnitudes of the voltage angles. Okay, they are the angles. So using this formula and substituting I equal to one, I equal to one in this, I can calculate what is the injected power at the slack bus. And next step is I calculate some parameters why we will see soon okay so we'll do a little bit of mathematics here so i have the expression for pi i have the expression for pi now let me take the derivative of pi with respect to an angle delta k okay and k is not equal to i right so we will see what is the derivative so if you look at this equation here I'm going to differentiate PI with respect to delta K. That means I have to consider this equation when J is equal to K. Okay, so fine. So let me see when I derive that the sigma will go off because it is for a unique value of J. It's for a unique value of J, the sigma will go. So I'll have to deal with only one term here. That is when J is equal to K. So if you look at this expression, okay, it has n terms for j equal to one to n, it has n terms, right? Now I want to differentiate with respect to delta k. So the only term of in interest to me will be where the variable delta k appears. And that will appear only when j is equal to k. I hope it's clear now. So I need to consider only one equation and then differentiate that with one term and differentiate that with respect to delta k. So I get vi, J is now equal to K, so VI, VK, and GIK. Now I have, this will become delta I minus delta K. So the derivative of cos delta I minus delta K with respect to delta K will be, so the derivative of cos is minus sine. So I'll have minus sine of delta I minus delta K. And again, the derivative of the argument is minus one because I have minus delta K here. So it'll, the derivative of this 
with respect to delta k becomes sine delta i minus delta k. Clear? Then I have bi k and derivative of sine delta i minus delta k. So derivative of sine is cos, but here I have del minus delta k. So the derivative will give me a minus one. So this becomes minus. Clear? So now I have an expression for uh, the partial derivative of pi with respect to delta k for all values of k except k equal to i. Okay. The next thing, I'm only giving you the mathematical expressions. We'll see why we need it in the next slide. Next, I calculate the derivative of pi with respect to delta i. Right. And now you can see I have in, if you take this term, I, I, I will get delta i in all the terms, right? I'll get delta i in all the terms. So there are n terms, I'll get delta i in all the terms. However, when j is equal to i, this argument becomes zero, okay? So that term, I cannot take the derivative of that with respect to delta i. It would be zero because delta i will vanish when j is equal to i. Therefore, the derivative of uh, pi with respect to delta i will be sigma. Sigma will be there. I will only not have a term corresponding to j equal to i because this argument becomes zero. So I have vi, vj. Now I have to differentiate this with respect to delta i. So that would simply become minus gij cos delta i. Derivative of cos is sine sine delta i minus delta j and uh, here this would become minus b i j cos delta i minus cos delta j okay so i have two expressions here for the partial derivative of pi with respect to delta k and also with respect to delta i now this you calculate these in the fourth step and then what do i do with it so now let's just see here i have my total loss in the system is equal to the injected power, right? Why, what is the total generation? The total generation is equal to the loss plus demand, right? So the loss is equal to sigma PGI minus sigma PDI. Again, I draw your attention to the indexes. So I have M generators. So I have from I equal to one to M. Here slack bus you have to include because slack bus will also provide for the loss. Okay. And the index for the load bus is from one to N. You can have load at all the N bus, right? This is a simple expression. The loss is equal to generation minus demand. So now let's see here. Supposing I want to differentiate the loss with respect to the generation. You know this, this is important in calculating penalty factors. You have already been uh, exposed to it in the problem of economic dispatch. So if I take the derivative of this with respect to uh, PGI, now you see here in my dynamic problem, the Ds are all constant, the load is constant, but I want to vary G. So in effect, the partial derivative of PL, that is the loss with respect to PG, will be same as the law the derivative of loss with respect to pi because do p l by do p d i will be zero because p d is a constant okay so now let me uh, do again a little bit of jugglery here so now if i have do p l by do delta k right so from the law of differentiation p l depends on P1, P2, P3, P4, it depends on everything. The loss depends on all the generations and uh, all the injections, okay? So do PL by do delta K will be equal to do P1 by do delta K plus do P2 by do delta K plus do PM by do delta K and so on. Please see here, I am taking the derivative of the loss with respect to a particular bus angle from two to n. Why not one? You know, one is the slack bus and delta one is always taken to be zero. 
clear so this is from the law of differentiation because pl depends on all the injections it depends on all the injections from 1 to n okay next do pl by do delta k again from the law of differentiation i can write this as do p l by do p 1 into do p 1 by do delta k. You can see that these two will cancel. P 1, this is in the denominator, this is in the numerator. So each term I am writing here as product of two t, two terms. Okay. So do p l by do delta k is equal to do p l by do p 1 into do p 1 by do delta k right so this is from the law of differentiation partial differentiation you can write like this because delta k is also a function of the injections okay so now i have these two injection these two equations let me call this as equation one and this as equation two i'm going to do a little bit of manipulation that's why i've given you the numbers now i can write this equation as follows if I subtract 2 from 1, let me get back. You just see here. Yes. So, if I subtract 2 from 1, this is 2. If I subtract this from here, what do I get? On the left hand side, I get a 0. Right? Because both are dou PL by dou delta K. Now, if I subtract this from this, I get here dou P1 into dou delta k, this is common, 1, I take 1, I'm going to subtract 2 from 1, so it is 1 minus 2, into 1 minus dou p l by dou p 1, clear? Similarly, the second term, I would get dou p 2 by dou delta k into 1 minus dou p l by dou p 2. I advise all of you to please take a paper and do the derivation so that you can get the hang of it. It's only a simple way of writing it. So I have this. I have, when I subtract, I get 1 minus dou PL by dou PG1. I get this equation is equal to 0 because the left hand side both are the same. How many equations do I get? I get from K equal to 2 to N. So I have N minus 1 equations. 1 for each value of K. Clear? So now let me write this. If I take k equal to 2, if I take k equal to 2, what would this equation be? It would be 1 minus dou p l by dou p g 1 into dou p 1 by dou delta 2. Right? I take k equal to 2. Right? And this term would be dou p uh, 2 by dou delta 2. And the last term would be dou p n by dou delta n. Okay, so I have all this dou p n by dou delta 2 and each term I have to multiply it by 1 minus dou p l by dou p g 1, 1 minus dou p l by dou p g m corresponding so on. Okay, I have done nothing here. I have just put the equation on top in the form of a matrix. So now you see the size. Here I have n minus 1 equations, n minus 1 equations. Because k is equal to 2 to n, so my number of rows will be n minus 1. And I have n terms, so it will be n minus 1 cross n. And this would be n cross 1 equal to 0. Clear. Now we make an assumption here that, you know, the slack bus power does not affect the losses too much. So I assume that dou PL by dou PG1 does not change. Okay, that means the incremental loss because of change in the generation of the slack pass is negligible. This is a reasonable assumption. Okay, so if you look at this, I have here, if I take any product, I have two terms. Just take the first term and this product. So what does it give me? Do P1 by Do Delta 2 into 1. And the second term, I'll get dou P1 by dou delta 2 into minus of dou PL by dou PG1. So now this I am assuming to be 0. So this term I eliminate, I eliminate and take this term 
dou p1 by dou delta 2 dou p1 by dou delta 3 all these on to the right hand side so this equation i modify take removing the first term here and taking dou p l by dou p g 1 to be 0 and i get this see here i get this so i get dou p 1 by dou delta 2 on to the right side now the size of this is reduced to n minus 1 instead of n and this also becomes n minus 1 cross n minus 1 because i have removed the first term so this is simply a uh, rewriting of the previous matrix by taking dou p l by dou p g 1 to be equal to 0 right fine now let's see what i'm going to do with this so what did i do with this i have retained this term i have retained this term and taken let me see tell you what i did yeah i have this okay so i retain this and i take this to the right hand side so when you take a matrix from one side to the other you have to it is like a division so the equivalent of division in a matrix is its inverse so what i get is this so i have 1 minus dou pl by dou pg2 etc is equal to the inverse of the matrix into dou p1 by dou delta 2 this i have already given you the expressions for this that's why we did that in step 4 calculate dou p i by dou delta k and dou p i by dou delta i i gave you the expressions for that to use here now does this look familiar 1 minus dou p l by dou p g 2 1 minus dou p l. have you come across it somewhere it should strike a bell in your mind yes these are the terms needed to calculate the penalty factors these are nothing but the reciprocal of the penalty factors and i'll call this as 3 so in this step you solve for this term 1 minus dou pl by dou pg i you get the entire vector so you you solve for everything in one shot and then the reciprocal of this gives you the penalty factor at all the buses okay and we assume the penalty factor of slack bus to be equal to 1 right so this is what we do in step 5 okay and that's the reason why we derived all those terms and then we have the general cost function for the thermal plant to be a quadratic equation ci that is the cost of any plant i is equal to ai plus bi pgi plus ci pgi square so the incremental cost is the derivative of this with respect to pgi so the incremental cost will give you the cost to increase the generation by one unit which which is normally 1 megawatt okay so the incremental fuel cost is bi plus ci pgi incremental fuel cost is nothing but the derivative of ci with respect to pgi so in step 6 you calculate the incremental cost for all the generators right now we know what is the optimal cost the when it occurs it occurs when the product of the incremental fuel costs and the penalty factors for all the buses is the same right so good i am i already have my premise so in step 7 i calculate the product of the penalty factor and the incremental fuel cost for all the buses if they are equal we have the optimal generation with losses okay now the best penalty factor you can have is 1 the best penalty factor you can have is 1 so if they are equal you have already reached optimal if not then you calculate the difference between the penalty factor into the incremental fuel cost of each bus and compare it with the slack bus because the slack bus penalty factor is 1 the reason is i would not allocate any generation to the slack bus i'm only going to allocate the losses to the slack bus so that's why its penalty factor will be 1 okay so now you calculate this difference and then you so obviously i have not reached the optimal solution because all the products are not equal so you calculate delta pgi in proportion to 
this difference okay so now if this term is more than this if this term is more than this then that means you have to increase the generation of that plant i if this term you know this difference term is less than zero less than zero that means you have to decrease this is greater this is greater right it is less than zero means it is negative that means li ici is greater than l1 ic1 and therefore you have to decrease so the general rule is you decrease you decrease the generations at plants which have a high penalty factor and a high uh, incremental cost and increase the generation in plants that have a low penalty factor and a low uh, incremental fuel cost so you update the generations using delta pgi simple rule you can use just in proportion to this term you use it and the generations are updated and again you start from step 1 okay you have the generations then you do the load flow and then you calculate the penalty factors and again take the you know incremental fuel cost and penalty factor products and so on right so now let's put everything in a flow chart which would be concisely uh, which would concisely explain whatever we have discussed so I start and I specify the demands at all the buses and I assume the generations at all the buses, okay, from one to uh, one, two, two to M. So one is the slack bus. You need not allocate any generation in the beginning. You can calculate later. So PI is equal to PGI minus PDI. So you calculate the injections at all the uh, buses and read the load flow data that is all your network data etc perform the load flow analysis and calculate the slack bus power p1 so you would not uh, you know this will be, this will give you the injected power at slack bus 1 calculate the generated power which is equal to p1 plus pd1 now even here if you arbitrarily give some generation to slack bus no problem because in your load flow, you will not be solving, you will not be using PG1 at all. You will solve for all the buses and you will calculate. So even if you are given some value, it doesn't matter. Okay. So PG1 is equal to P1 plus PD1. Remember, in that formula we used, you get PI, which is the injected power. It's not the generated power. So the PG1 will be equal to P1 plus PD1. Next, you calculate the partial derivatives of the powers with respect to the angles using equation one and two and then you solve equation three for these terms that is one minus dou pl by dou pgi and you calculate the penalty factors as reciprocal of this and the penalty factor of the slack bus set it equal to one okay so we take off from here in the next slide that's why i marked the one here so then you find out the incremental fuel costs, calculate the product of the penalty factors and the incremental fuel costs. Remember, you do this only for the generator buses because cost is involved only in the generator buses. There is no incremental fuel cost in non-generator buses. Okay, so you calculate and if all of them are equal, you have reached the solution. If they are not equal, Calculate the difference of the product for bus I and the slack bus. If it is less than zero, we will go to two. And if it is greater than zero, we will go to three. Okay. If it is less than zero means this term is less. Okay. And if it is greater than zero means this term is higher. So I told you whenever the cost is more you reduce the generation and when the cost is less, you increase the generation. So here it is more, that is at three, it is more and at two, it is less. So if it is less, increment the generation. So delta PGI is greater than zero. So increase the generation of that particular generator. If it is high, then you decrease it. So PGI you put a minus delta pgi okay or you can put a plus delta pgi and pgi is negative either way now if any of the generator buses hit their limits you have to 
level it at that limit. So you check whether any of the PGI is greater than PGI max. If S, you set the PGI to PGI max. If it is no, check whether it is greater than PGI min. If yes, then PGI is equal to PGI min. Sorry, this should not be greater than, this should be less than. If it is less than PGI min, then you set it to PGI min otherwise. If it is no, then we go to B. And what do I have in B? Step two. Okay, so that's how you uh, do the optimal load flow. Thank you.